Hey guys, Zenite here. So Hearthstone has now officially went into open beta for both the American and the European players. And I've been coming across a lot of new players in the last few days, both in uh, Arena and in Constructed. And I've been seeing a lot of interesting decks being played, a lot of cards that are mostly considered in, in the Hearthstone community to be, to be generally bad being played, um, a lot of basic decks being played, and I thought I'd do just a quick primer for new players so they can kind of get an idea and a feel for some of the classes in the game, what their basic mechanics are and what they should maybe look for when they're starting to unlock cards and build their own decks. So let's go ahead and jump in and do that. Oh, let's go to my collection here. Okay, so the first class I want to talk about is the Druid. The Druid is actually a very interesting class. They're very versatile, and that's reflected in the card options that you have as a Druid. Um, for example, let's look at the Power of the Wild here. Now, Power of the Wild on its face doesn't seem like an amazing card, because most people look at the ability for 2 mana to summon a 3-2 Panther. Now, a 3-2 Panther for 2 mana isn't an exceptional card. It's average at best. And that's because there are a lot of other two-cost neutral minions that are not only 3-2, but have a much better effect on the battlefield, like an Acidic Swamp Ooze, which has the ability to destroy your enemy hero's weapon, or something like a Knife Juggler or a Fairy Dragon. Now, on their face value, those seem like better cards, but again, with the Druid, why you have that kind of a premium on the cost to ability is because you have the option to not only summon a 3-2 Panther, you can also use this card alternatively to give all your minions on the battlefield a plus one, plus one. And that's a theme that you see repeated with a lot of Druid cards. Um, let's take a look at another one here, Wrath. Wrath is actually one of uh, my favorite direct damage slash removal cards in the game. Almost all of my Druid decks carry two of them. Um, they're considered one of the better cards in the game by most people. Um, and the Wrath card basically allows you to deal 3 damage to a minion or deal 1 damage and draw a card. Again, it's that option to best choose what fits that situation. Mark of Nature uh, gives a minion plus 4 attack or plus 4 health and taunt. Druid of the Claw. Uh, you can make a 4-4 four, four with charge or you can turn this into a 4-6 with taunt. Ancient of War, you can make it a 5-10 with Taunt, or turn it into a big, beefy 10-5. Uh, Scenarius, even the class Legendary, again, has that um, optional um, stats. You can either use it to give all your minions on the battlefield a plus 2, plus 2, or you can use it to summon two Treants that are 2-2. Two, two. Um, even some of the direct... Uh, damage removal cards in the game have that option. I don't have all the cards unlocked, but here's one called Starfall. Starfall also allows you to deal 5 damage to one minion, or you can do 2 damage across the board. So you can kind of see this reoccurring theme with a lot of the Druid cards. It's about versatility and kind of giving the player the options of what to use that best fits that situation for what they need at that uh, specific time. Now, Druids tend to be better late-game decks than they are early games. You can build a Druid with a decent to solid early game, um, but they really shine in the late game, and that's because of the big beefy creatures like Iron Bark Protector and Ancient of War, um, and again, the class uh, Legendary Scenarius. So once you really get into the late game with Druids, that's where they kind of really shine, and that's when you can really start overwhelming your opponent. Now, to get to that late game, the Druids do have a couple options. One being Wild Growth. Now, Wild Growth allows you to gain an empty mana crystal for two mana. Now, this basically puts you up one mana crystal against your opponent for every turn after that. So you're going to always have one mana above them. Now, the problem with Wild Growth is if you don't draw it early on in the game, it l starts losing a lot of its value. Um, if you're drawing this around turn 8 or 9, then it's become greatly diminished in its value. Now, the one card I do like, though, is Innervate. Now, Innervate, for no mana, has zero cost, will allow you to gain two mana crystals for that turn only. Now, what makes this very powerful is that you can play costly minions 
a lot earlier than your opponent. For example, with Innervates, you can get out like a turn one Harvest Golem. Or on turn four, um, you could theoretically, if you have the coin as well, play something like an Ancient of War. Or you could turn three Druid of the Claw. So it gives you that little boost early in the game that you can get a good minion out there and say, okay, now deal with this. Now the Druid's hero ability is actually very interesting. It's kind of a mixture between the warrior ability and the rogue ability. The warrior ability gives you plus two armor. The rogue ability gives you a one-two dagger that does one damage that lasts for two turns. Um, the druid ability kind of splits that. It gives you one armor and one attack. Now, this can be used to remove minions. It can be just used to um, you know, punch the enemy hero in the face if you have the extra mana sitting around. The nice thing about the Druid ability is that armor is persistent. So even if you don't use the attack, that armor does carry on. Um, and that can actually be very helpful, especially in some of the late game uh, rank constructed uh, matches that you're seeing a lot of aggro, especially with Hunter right now. Um, that extra armor can be very beneficial. Um, druids also have cards like Claw, which gives your hero an extra plus two um, armor and attack that turn, combine that with your hero ability, and then for three costs you can do three damage to something and have three armor so you don't even take uh, the, the three damage from the minion. Uh, there's also a bigger, beefier version of that called Bite, which allows you to do four damage and four armor that turn. Um, so, coupled Bite uh, with your hero ability, then for six mana you can do uh, five attack to something and have five armor which can remove, you know, uh, a, a decent amount of mid-sized minions. Or, you know, that could be something you could just take it to the face of the enemy hero if you need that little bit extra damage to finish him off. Um, overall, though, the Druid is a uh, pretty solid class. Um, it does have presence in late game and higher tiers of rank constructed. Um, there's a deck out there right now called Strife Crows that's being played a lot that's pretty solid. I have a version of it that's uh, kind of like a ghetto cheap version of it because I don't have a lot of the legendaries. Um, but overall, Druid, like I said, it's a very solid deck. It has a lot of versatility and flexibility to how you play it. Um, you can play it um, as a mid-game deck. You can play it as a late-game deck. And it's actually a lot of fun to play because of that flexibility. So in a nutshell, that's kind of the Druid. Um, as far as what cards I would be looking to unlock early on with the Druid, um, I, my number one would probably be Keeper of the Grove as far as rares go. Keeper of the Grove is one of the best fours in the game. Um, not only does it have that four health, which is very nice because it'll trade with something like a 3-2 once it's already on the board and stay alive, it also has the ability to either do two damage or silence a menu when it comes into play. So you're almost always guaranteed to be able to get a two-for-one trade with the Keeper of the Grove. Almost all the high-end decks are running Keepers of the Grove. Um, it's a great card. And I would look to unlock a couple of those as soon as you can. Uh, now the cost to make these are 100 dust, which isn't too bad. It's not too bad. You can actually uh, start chalking up uh, a decent amount of dust if you start playing Arena, or just disenchanting the extra cards that you get. Um, early on, you probably won't have a lot of extras because you are getting a lot of uh, cards that you don't have yet. Um, but this is one of the cards I would definitely look towards creating early on. Um, another one that I would look towards creating is Starfall. Now, this also costs 100 dust to make. Now, Starfall is a very powerful card because you, again, have that option to do uh, 5 damage to one minion, or you can do that 2 damage across the board. And this is actually a pretty powerful card against a lot of these low-cost minion aggro decks that you may see Warlocks running, uh, like the Murloc deck, early on. Um, especially if you combo this with something like... Uh, spell damage, um, like a 2-2 like, you know, two -two Cobalt Geomancer or something along those lines. Anything that causes spell damage is going to boost the damage that your removal does, like Starfall. 
Um, the other main one that you're going to be using for um, kind of AOE removal is Swipe. And here it is. Now, Swipe does four damage to one target and one damage to all the other minions on the board, including the hero. Now, this also benefits from spell power. So if you have a minion out there that gives spell power, that will be five damage to one minion and two damage to all other minions. So druids do benefit from spell power, and that may be something you want to keep in mind. Um, again, that's a, kind of an option of how you want to build your deck. Um, but that's something you should uh, definitely uh, keep in mind when you're putting them together. But that's kind of the, the basics of the Druid, uh, how they're played, when they accelerate or, or excel. And um, overall, like I said, they're a pretty solid uh, hero class, and they do pretty well. And um, they're one of my favorites. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one.